Hello, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Schuster. I'm a consultant in the Department of Neurology at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. My subspecialty interest is multiple sclerosis. For those of you who don't know, multiple sclerosis is a disease of the central nervous system, which means it's a disease of the brain, the optic nerves, and the spinal cord. It's a disease that tends to attack young people in the prime of life, and it can be a disease that's very difficult to diagnose because the symptoms of multiple sclerosis can be quite varied and can resemble many other disorders. My special interest is in the gender difference in multiple sclerosis. We've known for years that multiple sclerosis attacks women more often than men by at least a two to one margin. This, incre this increased incidence in women may actually be increasing over time and we don't know exactly why. We also know that multiple sclerosis tends to get better in women in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. Because of this, there's been a great interest in whether or not hormones, both female and male hormones, play a significant role in whether you are at risk for multiple sclerosis and how your disease might progress, depending if you're female or male. Other hormones are also very interesting in multiple sclerosis. Vitamin D, for example, which we used to think of as a simple vitamin affecting bone, is a very important vitamin or hormone that affects your uh, immune system and might even affect how your nerve cells function. And so there's great interest recently in supplementing with vitamin D for patients who are at risk or who already have multiple sclerosis. Many patients with multiple sclerosis do have a family member, either in their immediate family or their distant family, who also has the disease. But the disease doesn't follow simple genetics. It's a more complex, what they call a polygenetic risk for developing the disease. There's probably a very important role of the environment, although we don't know all of the environmental issues that may play a role on whether or not multiple sclerosis can happen to you. Multiple sclerosis is not a curable disease, but I've been here 23 years and I've seen some amazing improvements in not only how we can treat the disease, but also how we can treat the symptoms of the disease. For example, there are now six approved medications for the treatment of the disease itself, especially in the relapsing phases, and there's also several treatments to treat the symptoms. In fact, now we are participating in a study looking at aspirin for the fatigue of multiple sclerosis. There are many other exciting medicines and treatments that are on the horizon. Dr. Rodriguez, my colleague in Rochester, is looking at an antibody that may help treat multiple sclerosis in that the antibody may help rebuild the myelin that has been damaged on the nerves. So I think we're at a very exciting time. While we don't have a cure, we certainly are a lot further ahead in the last 20 years than we were in many years before.